Hello, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold and you are not. Today we have many people in our class. Rufus brought his twin, as did Doofus, plus the triplet. So there's five of us today. And if you were at the first lecture and you weren't, although you were, Jacques, Osha was at the first lecture, the other four weren't. We discussed what opening? Um, the liver that's fried. Correct. The fried liver. As a vegetarian, I was against it. Okay. And for those of you who don't know what the fried liver is, which is most of you, now kids, they think the fried liver is when you play knight f7 in any position. doesn't matter what the position is. Okay. The fried liver is a specific opening that happens after these moves. Some of you have watched the lecture already, but most of you forgot. Okay. Now in this position, grandmasters play knight a5. And after this, probably a grandmaster would play d4. But okay, we'll play the fried liver. Right, and that's the fried liver. If you were at our first class, which Ocean was, and some of you were, that, I studied this open. very good. We did, talked about this for an hour with no tax. Also, it was like 45 minutes. Okay. Look at the fritz. Right? Sorry? You look at the fritz with them? The fritz? Yeah, the fritz variation. Not uh, knight a5, but you go uh, knight d4. We talked about knight d4 briefly. Yeah. But we're talking about the fried liver only. So I mentioned it was legal. Okay. And also, that was the under 1400 class. So they were like, where am I? What's my name? They did, I'd help them out. Okay. They all just had lobotomies. And what's funny was it made them smarter. That's right. Yeah, the kids get it. No, nothing. Okay. Nothing. No, no Trump jokes. No. Lobotomy making them smarter. Okay. Anyway, this class, we're going to talk about another move in this position. Now, in the first class, we were talking about the fried liver and white wins. White won every game because that's you know, more fun. When black wins, that's not fun. That means black's a piece up and he won eventually. What Care about that? Black? Who? Me. What? What if you're black? Then I win. Okay. Now, in this position, which I occasionally have the black pieces in, including a couple days ago, I play bishop c5. Now, I have a funny story to tell you. There's a grandmaster you've never heard of, that means they've heard of them, called Susan Polgar. And Susan Polgar in Texas went up to me one day when I was playing in the Spice Cup. She said, Ben, did you know in this position, there's this move Bishop C5. And she was like beside herself. And I was like, I, I play Bishop C5. What? So she just learned the move Bishop C5, like, and she'd been a grandmaster for 10 years. And I'm like, Bishop C5, like it was in the game of Balyovsky and Nand. Like what? Or maybe it was a non-Beliavsky. Now I think it was an actually I don't know. Which one was the one? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Anyway, so Bishop C5 is suspicious, but that's why I like it. Okay. Now, as you all know, my stepson is Archer. Archer. You could have said hold him, but he doesn't play in tournaments. Right. Although he has. He played before Archer did. That's right. Showed you. Anyway, Archer plays this with black, irrespective of me. He played it before I even met him. And we were at Nationals uh, about a year and a half ago in, in Tennessee. And Archer was playing in the Doofus section, like K1 or something. Like that. And he was paired up. He was like, beat Doofus, beat Rufus, beat the triplet. And now he was playing a higher rated player. And occasionally Archer plays quickly, oh, like God. when he's awake. And if he's asleep and dreaming, I assume he also plays quickly. <laughs> anyway, and so he, we're like, he's paired up and he's black. I don't know, after seven minutes, he came out. So we figured he probably lost. He won. So he beat a high-rated player, like, instantly. And this was, the, this, was the, this is how it started. And Archer knew some theory with Black, and his opponent did not. So Archer actually had to go to the hospital because he hurt his arm taking all the guy's pieces. <laughs> yeah, and the kids were like, wow, you can do that? Okay. Anyway, we're going to talk about this, and let's go to some of the games. Now... Bishop takes f7 is boring, so we're not going to talk about that. However, if you go to a book, the book will say, play bishop f7. Okay, that's what a book does. And after bishop f7, I prefer white, I agree. However, if you talk to the engine, that's not so clear. Depends how long you leave the engine on which engine you're using. We're not going to do any of that. Okay, now let's flip the board because the last class was white winning, this will be different. Now after bishop c5, you're ignoring your opponent. Your opponent's doing that and you're like, whatever. Okay, and again, books will tell you bishop f7 is the best move. And after king e7, some play bishop d5 and some play bishop b3. I was playing a game in the chess club here about two or three days ago. 
And my opponent made some random move like this. So I played here and I win a piece. Yay, and I won. I'm up a piece. I'm the best. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember if it was a blitz game or a slow game or it was for fun or it was for blood. I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> I remember I played H6 and I won a piece. Okay. So in the games we're looking at today, white plays the more aggressive knight F7. Now, what's funny about this is most beginner books and chess life for kids, in fact, every issue of chess life for kids has this position. That's all they ever show is the same trap. And they teach you that bishop takes f2 check is a good move. And then in all the games they show, black is crushing white. So when I played this, I was analyzing bishop takes f7. I thought nobody would play knight f7. Well, in the next game, which I'll show you after this one, I was playing in the US Open against the 2300, and he moved instantly every move. This was like the only line that he knew. And he played knight f7, and I was like, huh? And I took on f2, and he moved instantly. He moved instantly the whole game. And the game ended in a perpetual check draw, which he already knew. Yeah. And I, it took me like an hour and a half to figure out like what to do. <laughs> and I was like getting scared. If I make one bad move, I lose. So there's a lot of forced variations here. If you're going to play wild and crazy like this, you should know what you're doing. Not just, yeah, this looks like fun. Okay. Anyway, so this is a game where black is very high rated. And white is not as high rated, but his name is really cool. So, okay. so bishop f2 check. Now... You can actually play king f2 or king f1. I've never seen king e2. Never. King e2 looks crazy because you're walking into bishop g4 check and knight d4 check. So that's crazy. Okay, in this game, white play king f1. That's usually the recommended move. And now black's queen is attacked. So what does he do? Queen e7. Queen e7. And black is down a rook. And nobody can castle kingside, although white can't castle queenside either. And the question is, does black have compensation for a rook? The answer is fries. That's always the answer. They even laugh outside. They don't have to hear my jokes to laugh. Okay. So, unfortunately, when I was playing this opening, which I don't really play much anymore, I, I like didn't even know this. Luckily, my opponents knew nothing, so I was, I was good. Okay, d5. This is typical in this opening. You gain a tempo, you block the bishop from letting the knight escape, and you can play bishop g4. Makes sense, right? So the bishop takes doesn't make a lot of sense because your queen's already trapped. Know what I mean? All right. Okay, so d5, and he took with the pawn. That makes more sense. If you play bishop g4, at least I can go here, right? Okay. And knight d4 with what threat? The same thing. Now bishop g4 would be winning if it was my move. Also, your bishop doesn't control f7, so your knight can't escape. Okay, and I'm threatening bishop g4. Okay. c3 attacking the knight. Bishop g4. Queen a4 check, obviously. Knight to d7. Well, the thing is, this is hanging, this is hanging, and you're down a rook, and you're in check. The truth hurts. But white's position here is very, very, very suspicious. Okay, we're on move 10, and white's like, eh, I'll just move my queen. Okay. So he played knight d7. I assume that black already knew this. One thing knight d7 does, other than get out of check, is it opens the f file. There's no knight on f6. So if black plays rook f8 or queen f8 or queen f6, that looks scary. And even though white's up a lot of material... To be honest, I'm not afraid of these rooks. When we get to the end game, then I'm afraid of those rooks. I ain't afraid now. Maybe I have no fear. Okay. But you will admit, black has a lot of pieces out. Okay. King takes f2, and whites have so much material, I can't even count it. It's a lot of material. Queen h4 check. King back to f1. The problem with playing g3 is that your pawn isn't on g2 anymore. That weakens which very, very important square? Right, but I wanted one square. You give a much better answer than I wanted. You can't give good answers. I want, like, terrible answers. Right, f3. And if I play queen f3, it's mate. Knight f3 is mate. You know, depending on what you do, you got to watch it. If your pawn was here, that would be a lot safer. Okay, so he played king f1. Always retreat. And he castled because he wants to take the knight, right? Check with the rook. My class never listens. 
That's why I always lie, because they never listen. Makes sense, right? If you're not going to listen to me, I might as well lie. Okay, never clean your room. You guys should burn down the house. That way you can like the group. What's the group? Talking, he talking Heads. Talking Heads. Have you heard of them? Yes. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. See, they're ordinary guys burning down the house. Now, see, now you're talking. Hey, they're going to sue. Don't sue us. Copyright. Yeah. Okay, so Black wants to play Rook F8 check. Rawr. Right? Yeah. Then I, then I bet on Black. Wesley Snipes style. Right? Is he your favorite actor? Is he in jail still? For tax evasion? Yeah. Uh, he could be. I think he's out. Yeah. Okay. Remember, when you're a celebrity, you go to jail. That's the world we live in now. He started it. Okay. So he castled, and now Black moved everything, and White didn't move everything. But he did move this knight a lot, so that's good. And we talked about it in the last class, but Ocean was asleep. So wake up. Okay. Last class, I was like, everybody's doing everything wrong. What's more wrong? Right? Is Donald Trump more wrong? Roy Moore? We'll find out. Right? So who's more wrong? The guy who gives all his pieces away or the guy who has all his pieces on the first rank and gets mated? The only way to know is to analyze the games. If I turn the engine on, it'll say something crazy. But as I told Ocean in the last class, Practically speaking, in the real world, black's always winning. If two supercomputers are playing, maybe white can defend. And when you're attacking, 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 and your opponent is putting all their pieces on the first rank, like a Morphe opponent, then the, the, that guy loses. So in practical play, people can't defend these positions. Knight f7, that stops rook f8, sort of. Rook f8. And g3, ah, oh, g3, ah. Oh. Ah, ah. Boo! So if I was white, I would almost certainly play d6. That way my bishop defends my knight. Right? Now I might lose, but I would play d6. I guess bishop, man, bishop e2 check looks pretty good. Oh, wait a minute. Rook takes f7 is still mate. Darn. Man, the truth hurts. So if I was white, I would resign. Okay. Resigning is better, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm guessing actually after Rook F8, you're just lost. Let's see if the computer agrees with me or says I'm crazy. Oh, yeah. Black has forced mate. Yeah. The best move is to give your queen away so you don't get mated. So you've learned your lesson. Move these pieces out. Okay. And the game went G3, Bishop H3. So if you play King G1, that doesn't look good. If you play King E1, that doesn't look good. Ocean. Doesn't look good. So after this, I prefer black. I prefer black. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, so king g1, queen e4, threatening queen e1 mate, and queen g2 mate. Yep. Yeah. He takes d7. Yeah. Probably he resigned, right? Yeah. So white was 2250 feet A, which would make him like number four or five in Georgia. And then he loses in 15, moves with white. What, what does that tell you about that guy? Don't don't go to Georgia. Georgia's tough. We we showed somebody. Who did we show? Auburn. That's right. See, what's important is they beat us, then we beat them. If we beat them and they beat us, that way that's no good. Yeah. Right? Laugh. Yeah, like Wisconsin just lost, but Clemson lost a long time ago. If you're gonna lose, lose early. You guys understand? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand, but you guys do. Yeah. Somehow the team that just lost is terrible. The team that lost five weeks ago is great. And the team that lost by 30 points to an unknown team, they might be great anyway. You guys all know the answer is because this is on a tape delay. But we don't know. Who's the number four team? What do you think? What do the adults think? Uh, probably, maybe Alabama. I'm just going to wait for Yeah. We, we, know, we, we know, know the first three. Be, uh, we know the, none of the fourth. Yeah. Oklahoma and Georgia. Now, if I was one of those universities, shouldn't I pay somebody a few million dollars? Yeah. Then we get in there. Yeah. Cash. Well, that would do it, right? I mean, these kids are confused. They're like, what? Yeah. You want to get something done, cash. Right? Cash is king. Yeah. Okay. And then white offered a draw, and black's like, ah, okay, you played okay. <laughs> no, and, and, and white resigned. Okay. Next That's game. a pretty exciting game. Well, they're all like that. Okay. Except for this one. Man, my, my opponent has an American flag. This was the U.S. Open in 1992. 
What were you kids doing then? What's your excuse? Were you alive? Yeah, but how old were you? I was seven. Okay. Barely old. I was chess playing games like you kids. You were playing chess in 1992? No. no. Okay. That was their age. All right. So I'm black against the 2300. And then he played knight f7. And he instantly took. And I was like, I thought that lost. But I didn't know why. But he moved instantly every move. He had it all prepared. Okay. And I took. And he played king e3. Now remember, he's moving instantly every move. So I know that he knows what's going on. Now I started thinking. I knew I played okay so far. And I'm like, well, my queen's attacked, so I gotta move my queen, but where? Where? D5. Where? D5. Yes, that's good. Pawn D5? D5. My, oh, queen G5. That's 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 that's, that's, that's <laughs> it, 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 it is protected. Okay. Okay, so Queen H4 is suggested by the audience. That defends my knight. And it stops knight takes queen. So that's a good move. Yeah. Instantly g3. Instantly, without thinking. Knight g3. What else am I going to do? We're, we're, my, my queen's defending my knight. I got nowhere else to go. So I took. Instantly takes back. And now I'm like, hmm, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? And he's used like one second. And I'm like, ugh. Yeah. So queen d4. That happens to be the right move. King F3 instantly. Wait, what does... D5, as recommended by you or somebody. You with some question. I was about queen, D5. queen where? D5. There's a knight here. Knights go backwards. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you want to sack the queen? Yes. What? No. No. No, you have to go to the first class. And I don't mean here. I mean in St. Louis. That's, that's the worst. By the way, for those of you who know all my videos, which is all of you, and I made a lot of videos in St. Louis, over 100 are on that channel. Um, people are like, the one o'clock class, you're making fun of the one o'clock class. That's not the worst class. That's just the worst class I taught. Yeah. There was other classes for kids who weren't that good. They're like, a knight? What are you talking about? You're crazy. It's a horse. Okay, that was another class. That was taught by staff. Then you graduated to the one o'clock class, and then I would teach the two o'clock class and make fun of the one o'clock class. Right? Yeah. So Queen G5, that's, I don't know if that's one o'clock class worthy. It is check. Okay, he played king f3 instantly. I guess if he plays king e2, I take all his pieces with check. Right. Queen c4 check, queen f7, so okay. Yeah. d5, that makes sense. I attack his knight, I attack his bishop, and I threaten bishop g4 winning his queen, and possibly I have me, I don't know. What do I know? Yeah. Instantly plays rook h4 without thinking. That stops bishop g4. That stops queen takes c4, right? E4. Okay. e4. Instantly king g2, obviously. I castled, and that's the best move. I can't show this game in the first class because they don't think that's legal. So, yeah. Yeah, like me. Yeah. No, I was playing in a tournament before you were all born, including Jeff, and I had, I had a knight on f7, and my opponent castled, and I was like, oh, I was like an expert, and then I, I didn't do all that game. I didn't see castles. I was winning if he didn't castle. I was like, oh. Okay. Queen h5 without thinking. I take. He takes. And I have perpetual check. And he, we agreed to a draw here because I check with a queen. I can't, play, I can't play rook f2 mate because my rook is pinned. Right? So I just check forever. And he already knew this. He just wanted to draw me because I'm higher rated than him. So he was like, yay, I drew. And I was like, man, I, and I took forever on every move. I don't know anything. Yeah. So that game was pretty exciting. But I think now let's look with an engine and they can make fun of us. This was in 92. That's when all these moves were correct. Let's see how they are now. Okay, knight e4 is best. Queen h4 is best, right? Then knight g3 is forced. Queen d4 is forced. Oh, it says I could castle or play d5. Interesting. But it's illegal. The everything's pinned. The he can't discover check me. His knight's pinned. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. one, one o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Now it says castles in d5. Oh, now my d5 is better. I knew I was good. There we go. Okay. Then he played here. I played the only move. And then castles is the only move, right? 
See, I used to be good at chess. Now I have to teach you guys. Yeah. And then rook f7 is the only move. And then it's all zeros because they're perpetual. Yeah. So did you ask the guy after the game? Well, unless you play 95. No, I, I mean, unless you play 95. obviously. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't think one second that game. Yeah. He was like, oh, yeah, this is a force draw. Now, there's a lunatic in chess, and you probably heard of him, named Sam Sloan. No? Oh, he's the craziest guy who ever lived. He showed Fisher. Anyway, so if you thought Trump was crazy on the internet, he didn't meet Sam Sloan. Sam Sloan would be like, Trump's too boring. Get somebody exciting in there. And Sam Sloan writes a lot of articles and a lot of nonsense and crazy and sues everybody and goes to jail and everything. Anyway, so he was explaining how black has a forced win in this line because there was some analysis that showed that, but black loses by force in the line that he gave. So, yeah. But it was writ written somewhere. She's so like, look, you missed this forced win. Terrible players. As, as the engine showed, I played the only move. Okay. So I learned not to do that anymore. All right, now these guys are pretty good. Look at their names. Pretty solid, right? Yeah, yeah when your name's Oleg and Igor, you're good at chess. <laughs> okay, let's flip the board. Looks familiar, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, King take. this is still my game. King G1, novelty. This game was actually played after my game, 2003. If my opponent had played that, I would have thought for 20 minutes anyway. I don't know anything. I know I know knight takes e4. Okay. So queen h4 with obvious threats. G3. Rawr. Rawr. Knight g3. Queen e1. Queen takes c4. Threatening the knight on f7. So if white takes the knight and black takes the knight, black's just up material, right? Black's like two pawns up. So I don't know, this seems like black's up material and white's position's no good. I don't think white's played correctly. Open H5. Yeah, I don't, eh. Okay, he took the rook, he took the rook. So it's still equal material, but black's up two pawns. Knight A3. Check. You know, I just ate. I didn't really eat, I haven't eaten today at all, but I'm still mad at that move. Yeah, that's the worst square I could think of for the knight. Maybe B1's worse. Queen d5 defending the knight. That's funny. Knight in the corner is worse. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, which knight is worse? c4, which is explosive. explosive. Queen f3, also defending the knight. Knight b5, threatening knight c7. d5 as per usual. Here comes everybody. Rawr. So you got to take the rook, because otherwise I don't care. Yes. Yes. He took the rook. <laughs> and then see these knights here? Yeah. Very suspicious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's funny for some yeah. reason. Okay, threatening queen g2 mate. Okay, we can make sure you move knight d4, knight c2, and then knight a1. Is every move you said illegal? <laughs> okay, but most of them. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm threatening this, so we should probably stop that. Yeah. I'm waiting. Queen F1? Wow. Queen G3. Oh, um, yeah, no. Queen G3? Wait, which is worse? Queen F1 or Queen G3? <laughs> <laughs> no, Queen H4 or Queen H4. Yeah, Queen H4 is just check. I'll block it with a knight or something. Yeah. Okay, so he played Queen H4. King C8. Man, now it's tough. Probably Queen H3 check. Wow. Okay. Well, he, he resigned. He resigned. Let's see what the engine says. Queen yeah, it says queen h3, queen h3. It's still mate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is pretty funny because the guys who lost those games, their feedy rings were 22 and 2300, and they can't get to move 20. They, 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 it's like six moves of theory, then they resign. Yeah, chess is hard. Morphe was good, etc. Load next game, it didn't work. Okay. Well, um, now, this guy made it to move 11 because he's 2200. If he was 2300, move 12. Now, again, you kids are confused, and the adults are a little confused. These are FIDE ratings, not USCF ratings. So that's like 2,200 feet is like 2,300 USCF. And he like gets to move 11, and he's white. If he was black, maybe he'd move 8. Okay, same, th same, same thing. Looks familiar, right? King F1, we haven't seen that. Castles. Queen, queen H4. Castles is possible, yeah. Queen F3. 
Castle. Knight D4. Man, this looks good for black. What do you do here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 96 chest. <laughs> Cross your finger and hope for the best. <laughs> mm, what are you hoping for? Uh, there's no hope. Hoping. Hoping. Oh, no. There's no hope. You hope they play Knight King. If he doesn't take it, he's probably winning. Hoping probably King E7 and King D8 win. Yeah. They accidentally touched them. <laughs> that still might. Oh no, then Queen takes E4 is good, I guess. Maybe. Look at four, eight. Okay, so G3, that attacks the Queen. Check. Queen G2 looks forced, right? Queen's hanging. Queen F5. Hmm. Hmm. Playing for a draw. Playing for a draw? What? Yeah, he played here. So, after here. I'm guessing this move wins. That Probably that, so that might be the only move that wins, is it? Yeah, that's a pretty good move, knight c2. Yeah, I was looking at knight c2 and then knight f2 because that was funny. Huh. Yeah, now, now all three rooks are hanging, plus tax. And the computer says this is the best move. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's not good. You play king g1. And the game ended in one move. I would guess, what am I guessing? I mean, knight f3 has to win. D5 has to win. Rook f8 has to win. Well, castle probably wins for white. Because knight h6, double check. Yeah, So it does win, you're right. Knight f3, and he resigned. Let's see. Man, that's not a good... Those aren't good numbers. See those numbers? Not good. After here, you lose your queen. Rawr. So what happened was that somebody walked out to him and they took his 2200 ring away. Now he's 200. Yeah. This opening's tough. Okay. And then these guys are pretty high rated. 2295. Yeah. Okay. The usual, right? Okay. What did he do? King F1. Queen E7. Knight takes rook, I assume. Then what do they do? D5? We looked at this already. I thought they played D5. Then after ED5, Knight D4, we looked at this. This is a game we looked at. Yeah. He played ED5. Okay, this guy took with the bishop, and he's 2295? Wow. That move looks really bad. Bishop D4. Yeah, exactly. What? So after ED, this is the game This is the game we looked at before, like about 20 minutes ago. Remember this? Remember that? Yeah. I, th I think this is the game. And then here, 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 and then like resigns or something. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we looked at this. And white played the novelty. Bishop takes d5. I don't know about that move. Bam. So white has to get lots of pieces for his queen. Except then the remaining pieces are not in such good position. Yeah. This isn't good. Every white piece is on a bad square. All of them. How long does this guy last? Yeah. Let's find out. Material is okay, but his pieces aren't good. Oh, more than yeah, it's not good. Now material's not okay. Now he's down material. G6. That's what I'm thinking. G6. I almost think he didn't play G6, that it's a typo. Because that move makes no sense. Somebody hook me up. Why, why do you play G6? <laughs> oh, maybe. Bishop C5 check, King F7, Rook F1 check, King G7. I don't believe it. The king's really safe on the queen side. Wait, what, what's the engine saying? That G6 is terrible. So I think he played B6 because he played Rook F8, and now you can't play Bishop C5 check. So I think they meant B6, they put the move in wrong. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So let's play B6. Yeah, and then let's pretend this is what happened. B6 makes sense to play Rook F8. Yeah? So I agree with that. Rook F1 is insane. He played Rook F1? That's just crazy. Why, why would you play Rook F1 and let the guy do this to you? What? What was that all about? Hey, you lost this game. Wait, why did he do that? So, let's say you don't play rook f1. It's g6 is still pushed. Yeah, I understand. 
I mean, white, black wants to play rook f5 and then queen h2 and rook h5, so the crowd's happy. Right? Yeah. Yes, that was just crazy. Man, this guy needs to have his rating taken away. Okay, so that was bad and the moves were wrong. Okay, these guys are pretty high rated. Don't we look at this game? These guys all have the same name? They do. <laughs> Aren't they all the same name? We looked at that game, I think. All right, this game we didn't look at. Okay. Looks familiar, right? King f1, then queen e7, then knight h8, then d5. I'm learning this opening. So we've had one ed5 and one bishop d5. They both did well. ed5, then knight d4, right? Then c3 was the game we looked at before. And then bishop g4. And then queen a4 was the game. Did he play knight d7 again, a different guy? Yes, he did. And then king f2, that didn't work out very well. Maybe this guy played differently. No, king f2. Check. Aha, I think king f1 was the last game. Yeah, king f1, long castle, right? Then he lost in like two moves. G3, novelty. I agree. Man, I offer a draw. Who would want white in this position? Rawr, I'm so mad. King e1, threatening to castle. So the only threat is queen takes rook. There's no other threat. I guess queen e4 is annoying. Queen e4 is probably good. Yeah, okay, so he... No, queen e4. Castle, castle, castle. Man, I don't know about white's king. Although I do know about it. Whew. These guys always take things instead of stopping me. It says two knights. Rook, bear, bear, tractor, and four knights e five d five. Right, and Wilkes Bear or Wilkes Berry, whichever. That's a city in Pennsylvania. What other city in Pennsylvania has an opening named after it? No. Nobody. Nothing. Cambridge Springs. All right. Now you know. So I was giving a lecture, I think it was here. Might have been in St. Louis, but I think it was here. And I was like, you know, Cambridge Springs tournament in Pennsylvania. And the guy said, no, Cambridge Springs is in Massachusetts. And I was like, what? Wow. I, he was really confident. So I was like, okay. Then I looked it up and it's in Pennsylvania. But I mean, he was like, oh no. You know, there's a Cambridge Springs in every state. But I was like, I'm pretty sure it was in Pennsylvania. Okay. Anyway, this looks good for, for uh, black. But white does have triple pawns. And as somebody once told me, triple pawns are three times as good. Okay, so I assume king g1. Yes, I'm the best. Now what do we do? We're down to like 50 pieces. Queen takes d4. Queen takes d4. That's check. So you want to win a pawn? Rook takes f1. Takes f1. With tempo? Guy was king. Rook f1. I'm too old for rook f1. You can't play rook f1 because then white follows my rule. Always play bishop f1. Yeah. So rook f1's wrong. Queen takes d4 might be right. Then after king g2. Ah, after king g2, when I repeat the position and I play rook f1, you can't play bishop f1 because it's pinned. Oh, yeah. See, when this pawn's gone, then you're not playing bishop f1. So queen d4, I agree with whoever said it. And now they'll play something else. Huh? Yeah, now back to e4 or rook takes f1 first. Nobody knows. Okay, then rook f1. Yes. See, we're good. So I guess king takes gets mated. Because you wouldn't give your queen away if you weren't getting mated, right? If I saw the mate, I would tell you. Well, we could figure it out ourselves. Let's see. Bishop h2. Illegal. Bishop h3. Legal. Bishop h3, king f2, obviously. Then I don't see how either move gets mated. Queen h1. No, 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 no. On knight f6. Oh, yeah, they use a mate. Queen h1. No, I don't know. I don't know is correct. Check the A engine. Okay, so. What's the engine say? You gotta figure it out. So. Hmm. I wanted to do this because there's no defense to queen g2, but 
then he could go here and I wasn't sure what to do. Yeah, so that's not right. So let's do this and then we'll do engine later. Nine of six. Maybe. This looks, this has to be winning for black. I just don't know how. If I didn't know how, I would play it because I wouldn't give my queen away. All right, let's see if there's a mate in four and we're missing it. Wow, there's no mate at all? Oh, mate in nine. And bishop h3 also. Okay, only legal move is this. And then this is a pretty easy mate. This is a really cool mate. I like that mate. Yeah. Okay. Then this is this is obviously frankly mate. We could play your mate if you want. No. Knight of six. Yeah. Then win the queen anyway. Just and, and win the queen and mate and mate. Okay. So king f one's only move. Then king e one's only legal move. And then bishop f one queen f one mate. So you have to go here. Always play bishop f one. <laughs> king here is mate because that's cool, right? Is that cool? All right. And then king e one is the same mate. So we have to play king f3, only legal move. Oh, there's two legal moves. In fact, this is just mate, so that's not good. Okay, so you have to play king g4. There'll be a test on this, don't forget. Queen e4, ooh, queen e4 is a good move. I like that move. And then we get to play your knight f6 mate and h6 mate. If it's here, you play h6 and knight f6. And if it's the other one, you play knight f6 and then h6. Yeah. Okay. So the guy gave his queen away instead of doing that. He, he took with a yeah, took with the bishop, and then I assume the guy took the queen. Yeah. All right. The material is okay, but like every white piece on the first rank or on the eighth rank, so terrible. <coughs> that moves nothing to sneeze at. Thank you. So now he wants to go here. What a mean guy. Now he wants to go here. Man, what a what a terrible, horrible. Man, the truth hurts. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good king. Now we have a threat. He loves. See the threat? Yeah. That threat's easy to stop. That's the part I guess knight g5 is the only move that stops it. Then I have h4 for my king. Oh, he resigned instead of playing this. Uh, I mean, I could win your knight, but can I mate you? Is there a mate? Yeah, but there's no threat there. Yeah. All right, engine time. No, yeah, it just wants to take this, and then it says, I'm going to take that. There's no mate. When I take this knight, you're not going to save your other knight, and then you're going to be down a lot, because I have a queen for a rook. Mm -hmm. But white did good with these pieces. No. Now, if like, you switch sides, this knight's almost set up. Okay. The kids are like, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, good job. Okay, and least but not last... Craig Vanselberry, he, he was an American player, but this isn't for America. This is for some kind of Virgin Islands. <laughs> yeah, this is some kind. Yeah. Now, by the way, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, let me give you guys a quiz. Which player in this room was at that tournament? You. Me. And if I told you what I was doing there, most of you wouldn't believe me. In fact, I won't believe me. So that, that's that's actually a reasonable guess, but that's not correct. I just want to know who's going to laugh the most. I had a job at that tournament. <laughs> that's not that's not the funny part. You, you you missed your cue. You didn't read the script. My job at that tournament was I was the Belgian women's team captain. <laughs> it was funny. In those days, yeah, he he didn't read my book. Don't laugh like a grandmaster. So in those, well, I lived in Belgium. And my wife was board one, and she was American. But she played for Belgium because we live there. Anyway, so one match we played Canada. And Canada, Canadian women, Belgian women, not good for the Belgian women. And in those days, it was three boards for the women. Now it's usually four. And we won two and a half half. 
And one of the players was, was we don't beat Canada two and a half half. And my favorite preparation for a match was one of the women on the team said, I play the Sicilian. I'm like, good, I do too. <clears throat> and my opponent plays C3 against the Sicilian. I'm like, okay, what should I do against that? And I said, what do you normally do? And she said, no, that's it, C3, I'm, I'm out. I'm out of prep. And she was rated 2,000. But after C3, that's it. That's the end of her knowledge. So I was like, all right. So we looked at some books, and I looked here for an hour. So then I watch her game. It's move 21, still in our prep. Okay, move 22, she hung a piece and resigned. Yeah, good team. Good team spirit. Yeah, so that's the, the truth hurts. So I was at that tournament. It was in your favorite country, which no longer exists. Where's Novi side? Even the adults don't know. Close. Yugoslavia. Yeah. And this was the year of the tourist. So nobody needed visas for the whole country ever, from any country. Very strange. That saved me some money. So, Okay. Anyway, this game was played there, but I don't remember that. I remember a lot of stuff from that tournament, but not that. My favorite story, other than the Belgian women's nonsense, I was in the room with the Americans. Okay. It was the, the women's team. So none of them, they're all Russian. And their coach was also Russian, but they're American. And Boris Golko, he was the women's team captain. And he said, Ben, how do you say table? So I said, table. And then he and the other were like, table, 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 table. I was like, what? So I knew how to say table. That's why I'm a grandmaster. Okay. Anyway, in this game, these players are suspicious. Now, some of you are confused for obvious reasons. Yeah, you're always confused. You think the chess Olympiad, oh man, grandmaster after grandmaster, go US team, etc. Okay, the Olympiad is every country. So when Rufus plays Doofus, you don't watch those matches. But Rufus plays Doofus all the time. So some countries, you guys would be on the Olympiad team. Yeah, I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. Right? If you, and basically the rule is, if you can get to the tournament, you're on the Olympiad team. In the U.S., they like pay your airfare and your hotel, they give you a fee. Most countries are broke. And like their best players are 1,900. So they're like, can you go to the Olympiad? You have to pay for you. You're on our team. So these players are 23 and 2,200, but they're the best players in their countries. So, or they could afford to go. Okay. okay. So obviously, frankly... Okay, what happened last time? Queen H4? And then I think white played G3 in the game we looked at. Okay, this move I don't know. It stops Queen F2, mate. Yeah. Rook F8? Well, I'm thinking Rook F8 or D5. Rook F8 safer. D5 is funnier. Problem with D5 is Bishop G4 doesn't attack your queen. So I don't know about that. Also, a queen d4 would win. Can I jump over my knight? Man, that's a good move, isn't it? Yeah. If I move my knight so I can play queen d4, then you could play queen f2 because my knight's not there. Dang. Oh, well, what did I just say? I said if your knight's not here, you could play queen f2 then. So this oh. does, it doesn't work to move the knight and play queen d4. Queen c5. Okay, so I don't know. Like, Rook F8 makes sense to me, and so does D5. Okay, Rook F8. The guy made a good move. Now, what's the material situation? Usually you take that Rook on H8, but he didn't take it. What's happening? Come on, you guys can do it. This is the advanced class. What's the material? Black's up a pawn. Black's up a pawn. This is the advanced class. All right, let's count the minor pieces. Let's count them. Yeah, white took the bishop on f2, and it's gone. So white has four pieces, and black has three. So white's up a piece, but white's position makes no sense. The knight's pinned forever. The queen is stopping mate. These pieces are all here. The rook's never going to move. If the queen goes to this diagonal, I win immediately. So I don't, I don't know. Looks pretty dangerous. Okay, d3, I agree with that. Knight d6, I agree with that. Now we're threatening everything. Queen d4 winning, knight c4 winning, knight f7 winning. I agree. Or rook f7. G3. Rook f7 probably doesn't win. Check. 
takes, check, and black's up a pawn and better. So white's play was very suspicious. Yeah, because white got white black won a piece. Yeah. So black's up a pawn and doubled pawns. What's funny is, and I've complained about this in all my videos, when Morphe's opponents played like this, we made fun of them, but the guys all play like that. Basically, when it's really sharp and complicated and the opponent's not booked up, they all play terrible. When they're booked up and they play 20 moves from memory, then they play pretty good, right? So if you're going to play wild and crazy and insane preparation chess, you have to analyze this forever. Not like, oh, this is an opening I've heard of. Then you're like, hmm, what do I do? That's what I did. And don't do that. And my opponent, he got everything going. He knew everything. Okay, knight d4 threatening knight c2. B6 threatening. Yeah, bishop. This is funny because I was telling this to my student in a lesson I had before the classes. When you have opposite color bishops, that's good for the attacking side. This guy's attacking. This guy's not defending the squares he's attacking. There's no defense to my bishop. And you have a dark squared bishop, but your king and rook are on white squares. So that's not good. There's good and there's not good. If I was playing the game, this is how it would end because I thought that was funny. I thought it was funny. All right. So white played rook e1. Darn, he stopped all my checkmates. Now, if king g1, knight f3 looks good, right? So king h3. d6, solid. Defending the e-pawn. I like it. King d7. Now here comes the other rook. Yeah, I was right. Now, if it was black's move, this would win the rook on f1, yeah? yeah? So probably white should do something about that. Hey, he did. H5, looks like one of those checkmates we keep looking at. G4, mate. <laughs> C5, eliminating the double pawns. Good job. Man, this is harsh. Exactly. Check. Man, talk about not resigning. Well, it's a team tournament. You don't resign. Yeah. What's the threat? If you play king e1 and or rook d2, rook h1's mate. Yeah. So that was the quickest mate. See, you don't want to resign in a team tournament because your, your team's like, what? You resigned? So usually they play on too long, so the you know, game's not over yet. Very suspicious. Yeah. So in those games and in that opening, it's very suspicious to have white because you, king is running around. People don't defend well. The one game white didn't lose was against me. I'm the only person who couldn't win. And the reason was my opponent had the whole game memorized beforehand. And I was like, what? What is this? So I stopped playing this a lot. I was, usually don't play e5. Well, okay, I don't usually play e5, okay? But when I do play e5, uh, I've only had this position like five times. So I probably would play bishop c5 now. Play bishop e7 once, but I lost. Yeah, I blundered on move 39 in time control, or move 40. If I played the right move, it was a draw. I played the move that loses. That was, no, there were other moves that lost, but I found one of them. I'm good, yeah. So I'll tell you a funny story to end the lecture. A guy that I know in Chicago, you've heard this story at home, you can go get a drink. Guy I know in Chicago, he tell, he's teaching kids like you, but like 100 and not that good. Negative 100. He's like, okay, you go here. If they play knight g5, you take it. And they're like, okay. <laughs> and then he says, by the way, some kids go here attacking your queen and you don't see your queens attacked. So you take their pawn and they take your queen. If they do that, take this. And they're like, okay. Okay. Then he tells his students, I told you to play bishop c5, but you're going to forget. And you're going to play knight f6. And they're like, what? He says, when you forget and they play here, I want you to play this move. Because nobody knows that move. And they're like, okay. And he says, he's, right, then d5. 
But anyway, he says about 50% of the time, his students do forget to play this. They just forget. They play knight of six, they're like, oh, wait, bishop c5. And then when they go here, they're like, oh, yeah, he told us this tricky move. Then his opponents are confused. Yeah. So he's like, in case you forget what to do, to do this. And they're like, all right. Now, knight e4 is a bad move, but it's very, very, very tricky. So you can. You can, you can, after this, you can play knight takes f7. How'd that work out? Right. Anyway, what's funny is th there are people who, I mean, kids who are rated under 1,000, who do this intentionally, and they just hope that you don't see your queens hanging. And a lot of people don't. So they're like, oh, boy, another, another pawn. And you're like, oh, man. Yeah. It's funny. Especially, it's especially funny when it's true. Then it's really funny. Yeah. So that's the lower level of this class. The higher level is you sack all your pieces and mate the guy. The lower level is like, oh, my pieces are hanging. <laughs> yeah. But I like the way he said about half of his kids forget and go here. I'm like, what? How can they all forget? Right. Yeah. And the idea is, for those of you at home, when, when your opponent does play knight g5 and you can castle, that's always good. Castling's good. Ask Morphe. Well, I hope they sack on seven. Then you win. <laughs> let's, let's see what the engine says. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, hmm. yeah it likes black. But white does have good development. No. Just kidding. Yeah. And white resigns. Yeah. And as Gene Wilder would say in Young Frankenstein. What? No. No. I saw the movie. I saw it when he said It's when he stabbed himself in the leg accidentally. In class? What? What? I can show you on a video. <laughs> class is dismissed.